Hello. Here we are again. The House of Sixty Fathers. I think this is part three for you all. And once again, we start this chapter in the sampan. Early the next morning. Tien Pao again watched his father and his mother, with the baby sister strapped to her back, clamber through the rain and up the long steep river bank. Tien Pao stood in the opening of the sampan. Remember now you promised, tomorrow I'm going with you to the great field for aeroplanes. They did not hear him in the heavy rain. The sky was black with rain. It almost seemed as if the black sky were in the black river, and there was no sign of dawn. Tien Pao sighed and shut himself up in the sampan behind the matting in the dreary, clamming dark. He looked wistfully towards the altar with the saucer lamp, but his mother had warned him not to waste oil in the long week before the Americans paid them for their work at the airfield. The little pig was sleeping. The ducklings sat huddled in the bottom of their dry dish pan. Tim Pao lifted out the ducklings and went outside and scooped water out of the river into the dish pan. Maybe if the ducklings had water, they'd start to swim and whisper their soft little peeps. It was so quiet, and if nothing moved, the long day would never move on. Long before a little daylight came creeping over the river, Tien Pao had dragged out the rice mill and had begun grinding some rice for the baby sister's evening meal. The dear, dreary grinding at the stone mill seemed to make the time pass even slower but it was something to do Chen Pao went to fetch another handful of rice later he fetched still another handful he had to stop himself if he ground any more they'd all have to eat baby food for supper now There was nothing left to do. Chen Pao was regret regretfully shoving the rice mill under the bench when a mighty thump sent the sampan crashing into the row of sampans. It knocked Tien Pao flat on his back. One of the ducklings spilled out of the dishpan with the splash of water that went over the side. The little pig jumped high and squealed in, in alarm. Tien Pao scrambled to his feet. There were strange snortings right beside the sampan. Water gurgled and bubbled. Again there was a crash. Tien Pao clung to the bench with both hands. The other two ducklings splashed over the side in a new tidal wave into the dishpan. Tien Pao could not imagine what was happening. On hands and knees, he crawled through the rocking boat and pulled the mat out of the doorway. What he saw, well, it made him laugh. Five water buffaloes had come down the bank to wallow in the swollen river. Only their stretched, snorting noses and long flat horns were above the water. They were playing some kind of stupid cow game pushing and ramming each other into the in the water. Now and again, a rammed buffalo blundered backwards into the sampan. The sampan rocked wildly on the water. They'd knock it loose from its moorings. Tien Pao reached back into the sampan, grabbed the dishpan, 
just letting the water splash. He waited for the first hard bony rump to get within his reach. Then, yelling like mad, he crashed the empty pan down on a buffalo. The dishpan bonged like a temple gong. Five scared buffaloes reared up out of the water. They shoved each other out of the river and up the slippery bank with great alarmed snorts. They clambered clumsily. Then the lead buffalo slipped and slid down the bank, bringing the others down. They piled up, heaved themselves to their feet again. Dish pan in hand, Tian Pao stood laughing at the silly sight. He was still chuckling when he went back into the sampan, after having once more filled the dish pan with water from the river. I've lost my place. He set the ducklings in the dishpan, replaced the mat in the doorway. He did not see that the stake by which the sandpan was tried, tied to the bank was lying on top of the rain-soaked ground. One of the buffaloes had blundered under the rope, had scraped it over his bony back and had ripped the stake out of the soggy ground. The rope with the stake lay loose on the watery mud. Nothing held the sampan to the bank. Inside the sampan, Tian Pao still sat chuckling. He had not seen it. Tian Pao sat thinking out just how he'd tell the story of the buffaloes to his father and mother when they came home at night. It had been fun. He was almost sorry that he had scared the buffaloes away so soon. Now the long day loomed before him again. Tian Pao sat a while. Then he imagined himself hungry. Sure, he felt a little hungry. He couldn't, it couldn't possibly be noon. But it was something to do. He took down the bowl of cold rice his mother had prepared the day before and sat down with it on the floor. To make a simple meal last, he invented a game. He took the ducklings out of the dishpan and placed them around his rice bowl. The ducklings immediately began dipping their little flat bills into the rice. Then faster Tian Pao dug with his chopsticks. The faster the ducklings pecked and gobbled, it became a race. But the rice was going too fast that way. The meal had to last. Tian Pao had another idea. He tried to feed the ducklings with his chopsticks. He tried each duckling in turn. But it didn't work too well. And as he was absorbed with his chopsticks, the little pig unexpectedly rushed in and spoiled the whole game. The pig grabbed the lump of rice between the chopsticks, chopsticks and all. Tian Pao had to work to get the chopsticks from between his teeth. Then with Tian Pao busy bending his chopsticks back into shape, the little pig pushed his snout into the rice bowl and snatched a big greedy mouthful. In disgust, Tian Pao elbowed the pig away, but there was nothing left in the bowl but a few crumbs. Tian Pao scattered the crumbs on the floor for the ducklings. For punishment, he held the little pig over the crumbs, but just out of reach of the scattered rice. The little pig grunted in disgust and greed. The miserable pig had ended the meal in one blow. Now there was absolutely nothing to do 
The ducklings back in their dishpan had already drifted into their huddled sleep. The pig lay stretched out on his side on the floor. Tim and Pow decided he might as well sleep too. What else was there to do? Using the pig for a pillow, he too stretched out on the floor. He couldn't sleep. At least tomorrow he was going to the great field for aeroplanes. Tomorrow he'd at last see it too. The thought made him restless, kept him awake. He tried to imagine from what he'd heard his father and mother say just what an airfield would be like. It seemed a bit odd. A big grassy field for aeroplanes, as if they were horses or grazing goats. T and Pow laughed too hard at the silly thought. It wasn't that funny. He began pestering the pig, tickling him on his undersides until the little pig could stand no more. With an annoyed squeal, the pig jumped up. Tien Pao's head hit the floor. In revenge for getting his head thumped, Tien Pao made a wild grab for the pig's hind leg. The little pig squealed wildly, managed to jerk away. He raced through the sampan. Now he seemed to want Tien Pao to chase him. He must be bored too. But Tien Pao made believe he was sound asleep. At last the impatient little pig edged back to Tien Pao nudged him with his snout. Tien Pao reared up and let out such a crazy yell the startled little animal almost fell over backwards. A wild game began. They raced around the narrow sampan, Tien Pao yelling, the little pig squealing. The sampan rocked on the water with the commotion. It rocked. It inched forward, slid a little away from the bank, the galloping, yelling game went on inside the sampan, and the sampan pulled from under its gangplank. The plank fell on the water with a hard, flat slap, but the yelling Tien Pao did not hear it. At last the little pig could run no more. His sides heaved. He held his mouth wide open for breath. He threw himself down and lay where he fell. Tien Pao himself lay down panting and he had to rest for a while. Under the drumming of the rain on the matting there was not a sound anywhere. In all the sampans people seemed to have gone to sleep in the long dull rainy afternoon. Tien Pao fell asleep. Quietly the shore end of the gangplank loosed itself from the slippery mud underneath the river bank as the swollen river rose still higher with the rain. The plank scraped along the sampan. It edged into, out into the river and shot away as the river current caught it. Almost as if the sampan had seen its gangplank race away and wanted to go after it, the sampan too loosed itself from the watery mud at the river's edge. First it drifted slowly, slowly it twirled, Slowly and quietly it edged along the row of sampans with the rope and stake dangling behind it. Then, like the plank, it was grabbed by the current. It shot away. It was swifter than the plank. It swept under a high arched bridge. Under the bridge it passed the swiftly riding plank. An old man with a silk umbrella stepped out onto the bridge. In the rain darkness he saw a lone sampan sweeping away down river. But the wind over the high bridge caught his umbrella. He pulled it down in front of his face and shuffled across the long bridge. When he looked again at the far end of the bridge, the sampan had disappeared. The old man looked at the racing river. He muttered to himself, in the sampan, Tien Pao woke up, but he was still too fuzzy with sleep to get up. From where he lay, he idly tried to peer through a crack in the matting at the river bank to see if it was nearly dark, and if it was almost time for his father and mother to come. It felt as if he'd slept long. He rubbed his eyes, but it was dark. 
darker than rain dark, a rushing sound was in his ears. There wasn't any matting at the back of the sampan. The wind had ripped the matting away. There wasn't any river bank. This was the night. This was the river. This was the sampan rushing headlong down the roaring river in the night. Tian Pao jumped up. He clutched the side of the racing sampan. Mother! The wind caught up his shriek, but lost it in the rain. <coughs> Mother! Tian Pao began to cry. Then he hopelessly still yelled out one word. Father! He suddenly was still. Hopeless, numb with fear, he sank to the bottom of the sampan. He did not dare shout again, it was no use. His mother and father couldn't possibly hear. But the Japanese would hear. The river was taking him back, back to the Japanese. With a terrified whimper, Tian Pao caught up the pig. He shook the pig awake, shook him hard. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> then he held him so hard the little pig groaned. Outside there were only the night and the roaring river and the rain. Wide-eyed and unseeing, Tian Pao stared into the darkness, clutching his pig. He hugged the little pig until his arms ached. The ache in his throat <clears throat> stayed, but he could not cry. He whispered something to the pig. The words made no sense. They had no meaning. But it made him feel a little better to whisper to someone. He did it again. He said, Beauty of the Republic. He did it again. He whispered it once more as a hard hurting sob came breaking out of his throat. Tian Pao heard his own whispered words. He wondered at himself for a brief fleeting moment. He'd said, Beauty of the Republic. He'd called the pig by the name of his baby sister. It was silly, babyish naming a pig that. No, it wasn't. It felt safe of being with something that had a name. He said it aloud. Beauty of the Republic. And somehow it felt safer. But the little pig, tired of his odd position, wriggled out of Tian Pao's arms, jumped to the floor, scampered to the back of the sampan. Beauty of the Republic. Tian Pao screamed as he lunged after him. He grabbed him by a hind leg and dragged him back. The little pig let out a long, loud squeal. It scared Tian Pao. He caught the pig's snout and held it so fiercely. The little pig had to struggle and scratch and fight to get breath. I mustn't yell and you mustn't scream, Tian Pao whispered in his ear. And you can't jump to the bank. There isn't any bank. With the pig under his arm, he crawled to the back of the sampan and pulled in the rope. He crawled back. He kept the little pig pinched between his legs while he unknotted the rope and removed the stake. He doubled the rope, tied one end to the pig's front leg and the other end round his own wrist. We have to stay together, he whispered earnestly. We might hit something and smash. We've got to stay together. He reached back into the sandpan and found the dishpan in the dark and pulled it tightly against him. He and the pig and ducklings sat in a tight huddle in the centre of the sandpan. The little pig began grunting sleepily. Tian Pao could not let him sleep. He shook him fiercely. 
but then in regret held him snug in his arms again. Beauty of the Republic, he pleaded. He looked fondly down at the little pig, somehow calling him that and holding him. <clears throat> made it feel a little bit as if he still had a family. And now it didn't sound crazy or silly. But he shouldn't call a pig by his own little sister's name. I'll call you Glory of the Republic. T.M. Pow decided. He peered at the ducklings, peeping sleepily in the dishpan. Glory of the Republic and the ducklings. They were his family. It was better, much better than being alone, storming down the river in the pitch black sampan. Glory of the Republic, we've got to stay together, T.M. Pow said tenderly. In the dark, he tested the knots in the rope. And that, I think, I'm afraid, is where we'll take our next break. But there's a lot still going to happen, I think. We'll leave them rushing down in the dark in the river, down the river. And we'll join them again soon. <laughs>